really important to me and of course how it gets across certain truths to the population and what we're seeing with the BBC is an institution that's really just seems to be giving the views of the establishment and obviously most a lot of these people are realizing it so that's why why they're here I hope. Uh, I've become quite angry uh, watching the coverage on the BBC News uh, I, th I think it's, it's obvious the way they prioritize news stories that there is a unionist bias there there's a unionist lean and I think that we as people in Scotland deserve a lot better than this. They're supposed to report impartially and it's just not happening. I found a lot of people tend to be very blind, you know, to the fact that what the media is actually doing. I believe the BBC are actually using typical media propaganda to brainwash people, you know. A lot of people come up to me and they say we should stay in the UK because Scotland can't survive and I just think it's a lot of nonsense. There's a lot of scaremongering going on and it's just, it's just it's, we've had enough basically and we need to do something. What inspired me was uh, the, the overwhelming amount of bias that's been shown by 99.9% .9 of the media, especially mainstream media, with the exception of the Sunday Herald who just recently came out. Every other newspaper and TV company that I know has been favouring the No campaign uh, to such an extent that this kind of march has happened and uh, this is just a grassroots movement. This isn't organised by anyone apart from just Joe Bloggs in the street. I think the main one for a lot of people has been things like question time. Um, of course, we've, we rarely have any Scottish politicians that are on the panel. Um, very few alternative politicians as well. But also, our politicians aren't being represented adequately. Uh, most of them are from Westminster. So we're, the voices from, from the Scottish people aren't being heard. Um, and obviously a lot of the reporting is very colloquial as well, so we're seeing that we're reflected as a really small country that's incapable of being able to take care of its own affairs. I first noticed very strong bias. Uh, it was back, I think it was the 3rd or 4th of February 2014, and it was the day that Holyrood passed the same-sex marriage bill. And I mean, it was, it was quite a monumental event. Whenever similar legislation was passed in Westminster, it got wall-to-wall -wall coverage. It was number one news item on every BBC News bulletin. But when it happened at Holyrood, the number one news bulletin that day was, the, the I think it was the director of BP or Shell, uh, giving another one of these warnings about independence and how an independent Scotland will not be able to manage its oil. I think Wings has become so important in the independence debate because it is, tough, you know, it's irreverent and it's got that kind of satirical edge, it's got a bite to it that the other ones don't have. I mean, sites like Newsnet Scotland, Bella C up to, up to a point, We Ginger Doug, they're all great, they're all really doing very, very valuable work, but Wings has a kind of X factor about it, I think, that draws people in and once you get involved in it, it really, it becomes quite addictive and I think a very, very important aspect of, of attending gatherings like this is to to show ourselves to the general public who perceive us as being vile cyber nuts who are trying to terrorise <laughs> to terrorise people 24 hours a day. We're just ordinary folk and we've chosen to express ourselves and participate in this debate in this particular way and we have every right to do so without being demonised and, uh, and written off as subversives and, and, and terrorists of some kind. It's just ridiculous the treatment we've had. I've got a funny feeling the BBC aren't going to listen, so this is only going to be protest two of maybe three or four, and I would imagine the numbers are going to double every time there's a protest, because they won't listen, they're not going to listen, they've never changed their mind, and they're going to be saying it's going to be a no vote up until the 17th, maybe even the 18th of September, and then the funny thing will be, on the 19th you'll have the Daily Record, and the Sunday Mail, and everyone across the river, and this lot, turn around and saying that they were behind us all the way, but they're actually going to figure out when it hits them in the pocket that most of Scotland don't want them anymore. And uh, pretty much I stopped paying my licence after Jimmy Savile uh, was defended by them. And uh, I'm never going to pay them another penny and a lot of people are like me. So thank you for your time and vote yes. There's nothing official about this. This is just ordinary punters coming together and, and making a powerful, powerful statement. The BBC can ignore it all they like. It's not going to make any difference to us. It'll make a difference to the audiences down in, in England who really don't understand what is going on here. But we understand what's going on and we're going to keep doing it. So yeah, they should be scared. I think what would be the ideal situation is to see the BBC work completely independently. Although at the moment it's independent from corporate influence, we're seeing the governments having a huge influence on what's being said, even although we as taxpayers are paying for the licence fee. 
Um, I think what would be ideal was if it was broken down, say, into smaller divisions and there weren't such huge redundancy packages being paid out and a lot of jobs that people aren't really sure what these what part of the BBC's personnel are doing. We need more investigative journalism, we need more feet on the ground and we need more real reporting of what's happening in Scotland. I think post yes there needs to be serious reform of the, of the BBC and we need to form the Scottish Broadcasting Company. I think that it's possible to take the best elements of the BBC and apply them to a new broadcaster. I think we need to ensure that there's due partiality. Uh, we need to make sure as well that uh, there's more investment in Scottish productions and that Scottish values are promoted much better. I mean, I think it's, it's quite apparent over the last few years that there's quite the focus on programming with British in the title and I think we need to have a lot more Scottish programming. Once we get over this finishing line in September, it's going to be so exciting to see this new landscape develop and all the new people who will be involved in it. And it won't be down to cronyism and I can't his feather and people scratching each other's backs to, to climb the, the old greasy pole. It, hopefully it will be based on talent, it will be based on young people that have got vision who are not going to be constrained in, in how they work and in how they, they envisage their work, whatever it happens to be creatively, you know, they need to be free to do what they want to do. The possibilities are endless, they, they really are endless, but the, the first step is getting rid of this mob here and they've had their day.